Cyberpower got in touch with KitGuru recently and asked if we wanted to take a look at one of their latest pre-built gaming systems. We chose this Infinity X135 Plus from their website. What's interesting about this system is it includes an RTX 4080 graphics card, but only a Core i5 13600KF CPU. Cyberpower assured us that the i5 was more than enough for anybody's gaming needs, and they were so confident, in fact, they sent us a Core i7 and a Core i9 CPU to test for ourselves. So let's find out if an i5 really is all you need for gaming. So the Cyberpower Infinity X135 Plus packs in some of the latest PC hardware, including RTX 40 series graphics and Intel 13th gen CPUs. The CPU in this is a 13600KF, so it is one that has had the iGPU chopped off, so you don't get any integrated graphics, but obviously you're not really gonna be needing those if you're gaming anyway, especially when you've got an RTX 4080 series graphics card. So this Infinity X135 Plus is available to purchase from from the Cyberpower website. There's a buy link up there now. You should be able to go directly to the site and buy this system as it is. If you just want to buy the system on its own in this specification, you're gonna be looking at paying just under 2,800 pounds. That does sound like a lot of money, especially when you've got to think about things like cost of living and stuff like that these days, everything going up in price. It's a lot of money to spend on a gaming PC, but we have checked with other hardware vendors such as OC UK, Scan, Amazon, and eBuyer to self-build this system with this spec or a very similar spec. You'd be looking somewhere between 2,600 to 2,800. So even if you get it at the lowest price, the parts individually are gonna be around about 2,600 pounds. So CyberPower's charging you somewhere between 150 to 200 pounds to build the system and to install windows as well for you so it sounds like reasonable value for money so the complete specification as i've already said the cpu is an intel core i5 13600kf motherboard is an msi pro z 790p wi-fi in terms of memory you've got 32 gigabytes of kingston fury beast ddr5 5600 graphics is an msi rtx 4080 ventus there's only a single storage device in here but it's a two terabyte solidime p44 pro and that's a uh, pci gen 4 by 4 m.2 nvma drive so it's a very fast drive the chassis is a lian lee air mini so it's one of those dual chamber chassis instead of being split with the hardware at the top power supply at the bottom these are split side to side so on one side you've got all the main hardware and then in the other side of the case is the space for storage power supply maybe some fans as well. CPU cooler is an EK AIO basic. That's a 240 millimeter version. It's an all-in-one liquid cooler with a 240 millimeter radiator, twin 120 mil fans. Power supply in the system is an MSI MPG A850GF, and that's an 850 watt 80 plus gold rated unit. In terms of the quality, I can't comment on that. I've not used one before, but 850 watts, 80 plus gold rating, that sounds good. And it also comes with Windows 11 pre-installed. One thing you will notice about this system, which I did straight way is there's no RGB lighting in the system as standard however if you go onto the CyberPower website onto the link for this system you can change the configuration and you can add customizations to the system as well add fans or RGB lighting strips you can also add a engraving on the tempered glass side panel and you can also do things like swapping out hardware so if you're not 100% happy with the standard specification you could swap the motherboard put in a different CPU change the graphics card add more storage and everything like that. And you can also as well choose peripherals to add. So you can add a keyboard, mouse, monitor, and so on. So let's have a good look around the Infinity X135 Plus and see exactly what we're getting for our money, see how the system has been assembled. I've had a few minor QC issues with CyberPower systems in the past, mainly to do with how they've been put together. So I'm really interested to see how this one has been built. This is using the Lian Li Air Mini chassis. So it's a dual chamber chassis. It's quite compact. 
but it does support motherboards up to EATX form factor. So you're not really compromised on the hardware that can be installed in here. And it's also a high airflow chassis as well. So both at the front and at the top, you've got these super fine mesh panels and these also act as dust filters for the front and the top. The only dust filter in the system is at the bottom. You just press it down and it just slides out. So that's easy to remove. To get inside the system, you have to in remove the top panel first. So to do that, there's two thumb screws at the back, they're captive. The panel just slides back and then that releases. And then next you can slide up the tempered glass side panel and that's removable. There's a mild tint to that tempered glass side panel, but it's not too dark. You can still see into the hardware that is installed inside. At the top of the chassis here, you've got the front IO connectivity. So up here you have two USB 3.0 type A ports, a single USB 3.1 type C port. There's a combined 3.5 millimeter audio jack for headphones and microphone and also the power button is located up there as well. If you were to buy this case on its own, you would get some fans included and those fans have been left in the system. They've not been swapped out for anything better by CyberPower. At the front, you get 240 millimeter fans and they're acting as intakes. And then at the rear, there's a single 120 mil exhaust fan. There are obviously more fans on the AIO CPU cooler. The AIO radiator is installed at the top of the system, which would be my preferred location in a gaming system. It does slightly favor GPU temperature over CPU with the AIO installed in the top rather than the front. The 240 mil radiator is probably just enough for the 13600 KF i5 CPU. If you wanted to upgrade to an i7 or an i9, I'd probably be looking at swapping that out for a 280 or a 360. You can't fit a 360 in this case, so that would also mean you'd have to change case as well. Maybe a 280 would be enough for an i7, but I think if you upgraded to the i9, you would need a 360 millimeter all in one in this uh, system which would mean, as I said, changing case. There is additional space for more fans, and I would have liked to have seen Cyber Power install a couple of fans down here because that would increase the cool air intake. You could have two intake fans on there, 240 mil fans, uh, pulling cool air in and possibly feeding the GPU a bit more cool air, keeping GPU temperatures down even further. The motherboard has four DIMM slots available. Only two come populated with the standard system, so there's space there to increase capacity of the RAM in the future. There's also four M.2 slots and six SATA ports on the motherboard, so that means storage capacity can be increased as well. In this compartment of the case, I'm pleased to say I have no concerns with how the system has been put together. Everything's securely fixed in position. There's no loose screws or anything like that. The graphics card has a support that comes from the motherboard, so there's no sag in the graphics card, and the uh, cabling's nice and neat and looking tidy. As well as the connectivity on the front of the case, there's loads on the back of the system as well. So on here we've got a PS2 keyboard and mouse port, HDMI and display ports. We've got four USB 2.0 type A ports, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 type A ports, a single USB 3.2 Gen 2 type A port, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 type C port, two Wi-Fi antennas and 3.5 millimeter audio connections. And just below the motherboard connections are the input for the graphics card. Something you've got to remember if you're new to PCs, don't connect your monitors up to the display inputs on the motherboard. You need to connect them down here on the graphics card. On here you've got a HDMI port and three display ports. Next to that is the power supply, so you connect your power supply up there. There's also a little panel that removes on the back here. There's a captive thumb screw you take out. That panel removes and then inside here you've got two removable 3.5 inch drive bays. So if you want to add any 3.5 inch hard drives in the future, that's where you'd install those. To get into the second chamber of the case, it's just another couple of thumb screws, loosen those off. The panel slides back and it removes pretty easily. You've got a couple of vents in there as well for airflow to the power supply. You can as well install some fans down here as well. If you take these two brackets off, you could install some fans there. These panels also double up as additional storage space. Again, it's just captive thumb screws and these just slide out attach your hard drives or SSD drives to there, put them back in place and uh, screw them in. There's also more 2.5 inch SSD spaces on this panel here. Again, this is another removable panel. It has a screw in the bottom 
you take that screw out and then a thumb screw at the top that is again captive that panel also can be removed as i say install your drives there and that fits us back into position here you can see the uh, cable management again very good in this system it's very neat and tidy it's all been kind of bundled up and held together with zip ties so overall looking at the system it looks like a very professional installation no issues this time with quality control or anything like that system looks like it's been well put together everything's secure nothing's missing overall quite satisfied with how that's been built before we start swapping out cpus to see if it gives us any increase in performance over the i5 that comes in the base system let's have a look at the performance of the base system and that will give us a good idea of whether the software and bios has been configured correctly by cyberpower not a lot has been changed in the bios from a default profile only really the xmp profile has been enabled which will mean that the ram is running at its maximum speed there's no overclock been applied to the CPU. First, let's look at the system's multitasking and productivity performance. In the PC Mark 10 benchmark, the Infinity X135 Plus is only just behind the OCUK Spectra Indigo gaming system, which uses an Intel Core i9 CPU from the previous generation. And it even beats that system in digital content creation performance. Cinebench R23 multi-core performance is impressive too. The 13600KF produces a higher score than an AMD Ryzen 9 5900. X system and easily outperforms the equivalent Core i5 from Intel's previous generation. In the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark, the CPU score is again very impressive, beating off competition from AMD's previous 12 core 5900X and is a match for the previous generation i9 flagship. GPU performance in 3D Mark Time Spy is outstanding thanks to the Nvidia RTX 4080 powerhouse. The difference in performance between DDR4 and DDR5 is probably not that noticeable in current generation games just yet but the increased read and write speed of DDR5 is clearly visible when the data is shown in a chart like this. Storage speed won't be an issue when gaming with the Infinity X135 Plus. The 2TB Solidime P44 Pro provides read speeds of over 7000 megabytes per second and write speeds of around 6500 megabytes per second. With this combination of CPU and GPU the gaming performance is nothing other than outstanding. In a selection of of games running at 1440p resolution, the Cyberpower Infinity X135 Plus pushes frame rates to over 150 FPS in some titles. At 4K resolution, the system is able to continue giving us consistent frame rates with graphic settings maxed out, which is very impressive considering that the i5 13600KF is considered to be a mid-range CPU. However, most of the gaming load is on the GPU at this point. So that gives us a good baseline of results from the Core i5 13 600 kf and now with that data we should be able to see what improvements if any we can expect from upgrading to a core i7 13 700k or a core i9 13 900k or kf and this is really good information for consumers because it'll tell us whether it's worth spending that little bit extra to upgrade to a more powerful cpu or if you can be more savvy, stick with the i5 and save a bit of money. And it's very clear from the gaming benchmarks with the Core i7 and Core i9 added that upgrading to a more powerful CPU, either a Core i7 or a Core i9, offers very little improvement at all. In a few of the games that we tested, the Core i9 13900KF produced a minor improvement in the FPS at 1440p resolution, but at 4K the gains were minimal at best. In most cases, the improvement is non-existent, so if all you need this system for is gaming, then it's simply not worth spending extra on a more powerful CPU. With the i5 13600KF back installed, we can take a look at the thermal performance with the system System under full CPU and GPU load. As expected, the 240mm EK AIO is enough to keep CPU temperature under control at around 80 degrees C, even with this extreme load applied. The high airflow nature of the Lian Li Air Mini also does a great job at keeping the GPU temperature at a very acceptable 56 degrees C, which is a remarkable achievement considering the relatively compact chassis design and high performance GPU. So taken as a whole, the Cyberpower Infinity X135 Plus is an extremely capable gaming system. Even at 4K resolution, we were able to push very consistent 
frame rates with graphics cranked right up so the settings crank right up the quality settings on the majority of the games it's also a very professionally looking system in terms of how it's been built no issues at all with the build on this one as i said previously sometimes there's been qc problems with some of the systems that we've seen from cyberpower not at all with this one really impressed with how this has been put together cable management especially around the second compartment is extremely neat and tidy and it's concealed very well with those panels as well that is partly due to the design of this case but still an unprofessional installation could make a mess of the cabling quite easily it's also a very good chassis choice in terms of cooling with the mesh panels on the front and the top as we saw in our thermal performance test both the cpu and gpu temperatures were completely under control gpu temperatures especially were really really good in this system compared to the cost of self-building this system cyberpower are only probably charging you one to two hundred pounds to build the system configure the bios install software windows etc so it's expensive at almost two thousand eight hundred pounds especially when you're considering you've got to then buy a monitor keyboard and mouse speakers headsets whatever else if you don't already have a system in that sense it is quite expensive but in today's market with the price of hardware individually been at least £2,600. It's not a bad price from CyberPower. There's also that option as well of customization. So if you want to swap parts out, change the motherboard, if you're not happy with the selection or the CPU, GPU, add more storage, add RGB lighting, you can also have an engraving put on the side panel of that. So it's nice that CyberPower also offered those kind of customizations to the system as well. In terms of the negatives, there's not a lot really not a lot at all the lack of rgb lighting might put some people off it is rgb lighting is like a, a gaming thing i suppose with certain people personally myself i take it or leave it rgb lighting i really quite like the look of this system without any lighting at all but as i say that might put a few people off the uh, cpu cooler the 240 millimeter radiator is at its limit on this core i5 if you were to upgrade to an i7 or an i9 i'd suggest upgrading at least to a 280 millimeter AO with the i9 you would probably need a 360 which would then mean you would have to change the case as well and the only other downside to this system or the only other issue i had with this system was the noise output under load cyber power hasn't done any configuration of the uh, fan curves or the fan speeds at all it just uses a standard bios profile it looks like the standard profile as well not even the the silent profile so when this system is under high load it is very loud the fans ramp up and it is very loud it does use just the standard case fans as well maybe some better quality fans might counteract that as well but that will obviously increase the price but other than that it's a really solid gaming system 4k resolution gaming isn't a problem you'll get consistent frame rates and if you want to play at 1440p resolution you're in for some really high frame rates with this system so it's a great gaming system it's expensive but what isn't expensive these days it's been put together well so overall i'm really impressed with it so thanks for watching this review of the cyberpower infinity x135 plus let me know what you think of the system in the comment section while you're there don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed watching the video if you've not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so now. If you enjoy what we do here at KitGuru and you want to help support us, you can always head over to our store, pick up some merch, or you could even subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, if you want to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to our website.